Smile at someone and welcome them on my behalf and tell them congratulations and happy new month. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's been a very busy weekend for us for the right reasons. And we give God praise for that. Um, today we are going to start, I won't want to call it a series, but a build up on our theme for the month of September breaking limitations to staying together under God as we look at one of the ways to ensure that the limitations are broken and that is covenant renewal. Can somebody say covenant renewal? Let's say it louder. Uh, one of the greatest needs of a man, when I say man I mean both male and female, is relationship. In fact, like you read in Genesis, after God created everything and created Adam, he brought everything he had made to him and said, give them a name, give each thing a name. And by the time he was done doing the naming ceremonies for all that God created, there was none that was found that was suitable for Adam. Before then, God had said it was not good for a man to be what? Alone. And he decided to make man a helpmate. And he created the beautiful women that we see today. And some of us are very proud of the ones that God has blessed us with. Hallelujah. And so relationship is a key factor in our existence as people. You can't live in isolation. No matter how much endowed you are, no matter how strong you feel you are, you can't live in isolation. And relationships are based on commitments. Without commitments, relationships don't thrive. There are some people who want to be in relationship, but they don't want to be committed to it. And you will notice that those kind of relationships hardly will fulfill anything good in life. And so there are commitments required in every relationship. In fact, I use the word deep commitments, not just, except the relationship is a casual relationship, every meaningful relationship has certain level of depth in the level of commitment that is brought into that relationship. And so, another word for that deep commitment is what I call a covenant. A covenant, the agreement that is made that is binding on all parties involved in that relationship. So when people lose sight of the term of the covenant, when you lose sight of the agreement you have, when you lose sight of the commitments you have made to one another, they tend to drift apart and then separation is inevitable. And so if we are going to stay together, we must, at the different levels of commitments we have towards each other, regularly and frequently renew the covenants we have amongst us so that we don't forget that commitment. And so at this point, if you are a member of New Covenant Baptist Church or any other Baptist family under the Nigerian Baptist Convention, I want you to rise on your feet as we take our church covenant together this morning. If you are a registered member of New Covenant Baptist Church or a member of any Baptist church within the convention and you are right here in the congregation, wherever you are, 
please stand on your feet as we take the church covenant together as we see projected above. Let me just read the preceding statement, this uh, preamble. Church covenant is a solemn and binding agreement entered into voluntarily by the members of a local church to indicate the nature of their common commitment to Christ, his church, and his word. So, one, two, let's go. I commit by the church covenant as a member of New Covenant Baptist Church, Rumor Mercy, Port Harcourt. Having been led, as I believe, by the Spirit of God to receive the word of Jesus Christ as my Savior, and on the profession of my faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, I do now, in the presence of God, angels, and this assembly, most solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with others as one body in Christ. I engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge, holiness, and comfort, to promote her prosperity and spirituality, to sustain her worship, ordinance, discipline, and doctrine, to contribute cheerfully and regularly to the support of the ministry, the expenses of the church, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel through all nations. I also engage to maintain family and personal devotions to religiously educate my children, to seek the salvation of my kindred and acquaintances, to walk wisely in the world, to be just in my dealings, to avoid all tattling, backbiting, and excessive anger, to abstain from the sale and use of intoxicating drink as beverage, and to be zealous in my efforts to advance the kingdom of my Savior, to walk wisely in the world, to be just in my dealings, faithful in my engagements, and exemplary in my deportment. I further engage to watch over others in brotherly love, to remember others in prayer, to aid others in sickness and distress, to cultivate Christian sympathy in feeling and courtesy for reconciliation, and mindful of the rules of my Savior to secure it without delay. I moreover engage that when I remove from this place, I will, as soon as possible, unite with some other church where I can carry out the spirit of this covenant and principles of God's word. May the Lord help us to do that in Jesus' name. Amen. Please, let's be seated. Beloved, that is the covenant that we entered into as members of New Covenant Baptist Church, a local assembly that represents the body of Christ, universal. If we don't remind ourselves of this covenant ever so often, there is a tendency for us to drift apart. And when we drift apart, it's going to be practically impossible for us to fulfill our destiny, to fulfill our purposes for coming together. And so if you want to successfully renew your covenants in order for you to break the limitations of our staying together under God, one thing we must do is to continually reflect on where we are coming from. Tell your neighbor, reflect on where you're coming from. In the book of Joshua, that is our focal verse, focal text, chapter 24,
from verses 1 to 7, Joshua began to relate to the children of Israel. In verse 1, he said that Joshua assembled all the tribes of Israel at Shechem. He summoned the elders, leaders, judges, and officials of Israel, and they presented themselves before who? Before God. This is what we do every Sunday and on Thursdays. We come presenting ourselves before God. Why? And Joshua said to all the people, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, said. Long ago. What did he say? Long ago. That is history. Some of us do not know our history. Some of us can't even remember how we started our walk with the Lord anymore. Some of us don't know where God picked us from. Some of us just feel right now at this level where we are as though we have always been here. And because of that, some of us are not able to bear with the ailings and the failings and the disappointments of those who are not yet where we are currently. But God took them down memory lane. Long ago, your ancestor, including Terah, the father of Abraham, and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates River and worshipped other gods. But I took your father. In fact, one passage of scripture says, I saw your father like a child that was born and thrown away by the roadside. I picked him up and cleaned him and brought him to myself. How often do you reflect on where you're coming from? New Covenant Baptist Church, where did we start from? Professor L.F. Jumbo, you know that title is yours, even though you don't want to go academical. Please rise up, uncle. It's good to celebrate our history. Auntie Christy, please rise up. This thing you're seeing today and everything that has come out of it started where? In their sitting room. Can you celebrate the Lord? Auntie Christy, please don't sit yet. <laughs> it's important for us to know this because some of us don't know. It started in their sitting room. They yielded their sitting room for the church to begin. What about you today? When we, the church needs something to do with what you have, are you disposed to let it go? If they had not yielded to that prompting of the Holy Spirit, we may not have been here and we may not be here today. Just like the answer to the call of God that Abraham obeyed. You remember this on the school this morning. If Abraham had not obeyed that call, we will not be singing today, Abraham's blessings are mine. Thank you, uncle. Thank you, auntie. God bless your lives. He took them back. As a man that is married today with your wife, do you remember where you started from? I have seen men who have become so wealthy and they treat the same women that labored and slugged it out with them in the mud as though they are nothing. Remember where God is bringing you from. Those of us who are educated, do you know how it was when you were struggling with Otakara? How many of us know what they call Otakara? That's the current name for kindergarten. That's the old name and name for kindergarten. Otakara. We didn't go to nursery school. We went to Otakara. We put Akara in one pocket. Those of us who don't have Akara, we put Gari in one pocket, Pamkane in the other one. When the teacher is teaching, you will do like that. But today, you are a PhD holder. And you see this young child, young boy, young girl, struggling with his academics. Instead of helping, you push them down. Lecturers and teachers, remember where you're coming from. You were not always like this. Tell your neighbor, remember where you're coming from. Always reflect on that. Because if you forget... It's a saying, the river that forgets its source will do what? Run dry. Because there is a grace that has carried you to this point. If you neglect or despise that grace, 
you may not get to the next level that you ought to get. Secondly, if we are going to be successful in consistently staying within the covenant that God has made with us and we have made with each other, we must at all times evaluate, assess where we are now. You know, I like statistics. In fact, it was one of my best subjects in secondary school. So when you're talking to me and you're saying we are doing well, it doesn't make sense. I want you to put figures to it. We were five, now we are seven. Uh -huh, then I will understand. Or it was 5%, now it's 10%. Then I will understand. I don't like ambiguity. When you use a general statement to cover everything, it's a, de I mean, it's a recipe for disaster. You need to be very sure of where you are. Why? There are people who don't know where they are. They think they are progressing, but they are actually stagnant. As a church, I must tell you, if you don't know, in the past couple of years, I came back from Ghana in 2013. And from 2013 to now, this is 2022, that's about nine years, right? Is that not? In the past nine years, we have not been able to cross the, two, the 300 barrier as a congregation that worships every Sunday. Anytime we beat 300 and above, it means we had influx of visitors just like a day like this. Our membership role, by the time we began to look at it and pull out those that are no more here, it shrunk but it was there looking bogus, looking great. No. Church, we are stagnant. We are platooed. And when you are platooed, if you don't re-engineer yourself, the, best, the nearest place you are going to go is where? Down. And so when we are calling for us to go out for evangelism, when we are calling for us to be committed to missions, if we don't do that, before long, this beautiful place that we are sitting down together, God forbid, can be sold out to become a shopping mall. It has happened in Europe. It's happening in America, God's own country. It's happening in England. Muslims are buying churches, big auditorium that used to be a place of worship and transforming them to cinema halls and into shopping malls. You know, when we say, say, God forbid, it's not happen to us. But there are churches that are also closing down, even here in Nigeria. Why? They weren't assessing themselves regularly. They have an air that they are alive, but truly, they are dead. They never knew. They live on their past glory. You know, you don't know how much pressure that is on me as your pastor because of the height NCBC was. I'm not afraid to tell you that. Was. So each time they hear, this is the pastor, the senior pastor of New Covenant Baptist, they say, wow, wow. And then you begin to hear people, see people coming to me and say, yeah, pastor, you see, hey, my church, hey, we need support. And I don't find it very easy trying to explain to them that, look, we too, we need support. And some of us carry that air here too. Some of us feel the same way because we have not taken time to do an honest assessment of where we truly are. And so we still want to carry the same load that we were carrying when things were the way they were. Uncle Jay, if I were to ask you to do a 100 meter dash to where I am right now, will you agree to do it? I'm on my own. But assuming he does not assess himself at where he is currently and decides to run with Buchi, Buchi come. Even me, I will have to train for six months to run with this guy. Run down, run down. This guy does a lot of jogging and hiking. 
If he calls me and says, Pastor, I want to challenge you to a contest, 100 meter dash, church, should I accept? And I said, Yes, I'm the pastor of New Covenant Baptist Church. You are challenging me, let's run. All of you will turn your face and do like this. Why? I'm living in dreamland. I know what my strength can carry. If he does 100 meter dash, in how many seconds do you do it? Uh, 9, 10. Nine, ten seconds. Brothers and sisters, me, I go down for 20 seconds. <laughs> the only thing is I go reach the end. Abby? Why? Thank you very much. I must assess myself. Because if I don't, my expectations of myself will be too much. And when I'm not able to meet up with those expectations, I get demoralized. And when you don't access yourself, you present yourself the way you are not. And then the expectations of people of you too will be so high. And when you don't meet up, they get disappointed. And when there is disappointment everywhere, relationships cannot thrive. Husbands who are very good at hiding their paychecks from their wives. Sister Pat, uh, Sister Pat people, you know the way the, uh, the treasury has been of late. Assuming that you are the MD and you are hiding it from me all the time. And I come and, and I, I'm just approving, what's it called? Requisitions. Thinking that the thing is there. And then one day you say, Pastor, we are bankrupt. What do you think I will say? How come? Uh-uh. Have we not been given? Yes, we have been given. But in my head, the giving is still the same as that when we had over 10, 15 MDs of shelf in the church. But today the statistics has changed. If you are a young man below the age of 30, stand up. Quickly, quickly, young man, young woman, below 30, stand up. Are they not here? If you are not up to 30, okay, let's say 30 and below, stand up. Let me push it up. 35 and below, stand up. Don't be ashamed. Your age now, your age. You not change anything. I'm 46. Stand up. If you have a job, sit down. If you have a job, a job, sit down. Thank you very much. Look at all this. Some of them are not standing up because I don't know what pastor wants to do. <laughs> Maybe they thought I want to call them up. But the church is becoming more of dependence. Sit down, please. All those of you who have retired in the house, stand up. Retirees, stand up. Retirees, stand up. We are glad to have you. We are not ashamed of you. You have paid your dues. You will enjoy the fruit of your labors in Jesus' name. Look at them. Uncle Siri Harry, your tithe today, is it the same as that time? About one quarter. But somebody will still come, please sit down, God bless you. Somebody will still come and think that we are still the way we used to be. We are not. You must assess your current state and readjust yourself, re-engineer yourself so that your future will not be bleak. Many families have had salary cuts and they still want to maintain seven cars as they used to when things were booming. The cost of living has increased astronomically, not just little. I think it's over 300 percent. The things you used to buy with your salaries, well, nowadays when some of us receive alerts, we get angry. Before the alert comes, we are even happier. Because when the alert comes, you are like, what is this? What is this? That is the reality. And so what does that call for? Readjust yourself. If you used to eat a trailer load of fufu before, cut it by half, you will not die. You will only lose weight, which is good for you. Beloved, these are critical times. And critical times call for critical interventions. If we are going to stay together under God, 
We must renew our covenant. And if we are going to renew our covenant, we will not only look at where we are coming from, we must pay attention to where we really are now so that we don't expect too much from ourselves and get disappointed. And of course, lastly, look into the future. Tell your neighbor, look into the future. Tell them, look into the future. You know, Father Abraham is our example. The Bible says he was looking for a city whose builder and architect is God. He was well to do at the age of 75 when God asked him to go out. He had everything he needed to live. But he heard the voice of God and his attention was shifted from himself, from his comfort, from everything around him to what else God has in store for him. Now, church, where are we going to from here? Where are we going to from here? Have you thought of that? In the next five years, where are we going to? As a married man, married woman, in the next five years, where are we going to? Yes, we may have failed in some of our past projections, but I love a song that Mommy Benedict Organetica taught my children some years ago. I still sing that song. She never taught me directly, but I learned it because it meant a lot to me. Say, Mama, are you there? Dream, dream, dream. Please sing it for me from there. Your voice. I want us to listen to that song. Dream big. Big dreams are okay. They say if you shoot for the moon, you will def- you likely get the sky. Right? Aim higher than you are expecting to get. Yes, ma'am. You are forgetting the song. Exactly. Exactly. Hallelujah. She has forgotten, but the children you thought have not forgotten it. That's it. She made a positive impact. She has forgotten. If it was something negative, I will also remember. Though I am small now, I am not afraid to dream big. I am not afraid to plan. I am not afraid to project. I still look forward to a time where this hall will be filled to the back and we'll have to break the walls. Those who built this house planned it in such a way that we can expand. If you don't know, know it. They didn't plan with the intention that we should be cozy and comfortable with our little size. There is beauty in being small, but there is great advantage in being big. Imagine an elephant and a rat. If there's a context, who will win? Who will win? The rat will win. No. The only way the rat will win is to run through the nostrils. <laughs> Hallelujah. Three simple things for us this morning as we go. One, remember where you're coming from. Don't forget it. You were not always like this. I wish I knew I would have called. I didn't remember I would have called for them to pull my picture from 1994. 394, where I had a pair of trousers, two shirts, and flip-flop. You know what they call flip-flop? As we call it slippers in Nigeria. Bedroom slippers. That was all I had. But I would sit on the keyboard on Sunday morning with my flip-flop and my pair of trousers that I would get home and wash to be used again. Today, the story is different. But that will not make me look down on somebody who is still struggling because I know where I'm coming from. And I also know where I am right now. There are things you might expect of me I will not be able to meet up. And I don't deceive myself. I don't. But I have a future that is definitely bigger than where I am. And where I am is not where I used to be. I have moved on. Tell your neighbor, I have moved from whom I used to be and I am going to where I ought to be and I'm not ashamed of it. So, beloved, as a church, let's not forget the covenant. Some of us forget. 
It's an agreement. We have agreed as a people to be bounded by this. If we don't live according to them, we are calling for our own disintegration. It will not be God, it will not be the devil. It will be ourselves doing that. And so as we go this week, husbands, go back home. If you cannot find a copy of your wedding program, if you had one, call me. I will send you a soft copy of the marriage covenant. Probably one of these Sundays we will do a marriage renewal for everybody. Go back to your wife. Read those things to them again. Go to your husband. Read those things to them again. That time you said, with my worldly goods, I endow you, but now she cannot drive your car. Those times, as you said, my body, I give to you. Now you are starving your husband of sex. Go back and renew your covenant. For my beloved newlywed is still fresh. It was just yesterday. Don't ever forget it. May the Lord help us. May the Lord keep us together. And may the church continue to advance. Even in the face of adversities, in the face of everything that is against us, the church shall remain triumphant. Your families shall remain triumphant. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's bow our hearts as we pray together. Talk to the Lord. Appreciate him for how far he has brought you. Appreciate him for how far he has brought you. You may not be where you thought you should be, but you are, not, you are definitely where, not where you used to be. Even in 2022, you may not be where you thought you should be, you should be by now, but you are definitely not where you used to be. If per adventure your situation is such that you are feeling, I have, dip, I, have dig, I have retrogressed instead of progressing. I have gone back instead of going forward. The Lord who gives strength, the Lord who restores times and seasons, is still in the house. It says, call upon me and I will answer you. And I will show you great and mighty things that you do not know. Appreciate him for whatever level he has brought you. And thank him in anticipation for where he's taking you. And ask for faith to listen to his voice and to follow him. We'll take the first and the last stanza of the song. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word. What a glory he sheds on our way. Shall we rise as we sing together? After which we'll take the closing prayer. When we walk with the Lord In the light of his world What a glory Help me. 
help my family, help my church, help our nation. Help us, Lord, to stay within the tenet of the covenant relationship that we share with you and with one another. As husbands and wives, parents and children, fellow laborers in Christ, pray that you will be a covenant keeper, not a covenant breaker, not a truce breaker. Our God is a covenant keeper. Lord, help me to hold my end of this relationship. That the blessing that is embedded in you bringing us together we will continue to experience. Father, we thank you for your word that has come to us this morning. You have ministered to us. We ask, O oh Lord, let the spirit behind your word propel us to do that which you intend for us to do this season so that the blessing that you are bringing our way will come to us in the name of Jesus. Church, there is a, an urgent SOS message here for somebody. John Paul Eze, who slumped and has been rushed to the hospital. It's um, the in-law of one of our sisters in church. Just lift up your hands to the heavens and ask the Lord to intervene. John Paul is it that God will intervene. Whatever is the cause, whatever is happening right now, let light be restored. Let consciousness be restored. Let there be a complete restoration of health and life to that brother. Wherever hospital they have taken him to, let those who are in that hospital know the right thing to do, the right kind of intervention that he, receive, he needs. And let the Holy Spirit do what only him can do. Let the great physician attend to him right now. Decree life into him. Brother John Paul Aze, receive life. Receive life. Receive life. Receive life. Wherever you are, receive life. Receive life. We call for the breath of the Holy Ghost to fall upon you right now. Life be restored to him. Consciousness be restored to him. In the name of Jesus, we speak life to your systems. We speak life to yourselves. We speak life to every tissue and every organ in your body. Be completely restored right now. Holy Spirit, do it and let your name alone be glorified. We thank you for those who are celebrating their birthdays today. And because of this week, we ask that you will bless them. Just as we prayed for them earlier, Holy Ghost, surprise them this week in the name of Jesus. And, O oh God, in accordance with our covenant relationship, we have agreed to pray for one another. As we pray for these families listed in our prayer corner this week, the Okereke Chigozies family, Okereke Mondays, Okunkwa, Okurunkwa, Okunkwa Emansen, Okunkwa Elijah, Okurunkwa Ungozi, Okowi Mercy. We pray for these families as we pray for them throughout this week. Holy Spirit, help us to pray for them. And as we pray, may there be rapid answer to our request for them in the name of Jesus. Thank you for all our guests and visitors who came all the way from Delta State, some from Lagos, and other parts of this country to attend the wedding. Those who came in from abroad, UK, America, wherever they came from, we ask that as some of them are already on their way going home, you will return them safely to their destination in the name of Jesus. And those that shall travel later, you will also take them back to their destinations. We thank you once again for this awesome time we have had in your presence. Go with us and grant us victory on every side this week. Let all appointments work out in our favor. Let every interview that people will have to attend, let them work out in their favor. Those who have deliverables in their offices, grant them speed to, to meet up with their deliverables. Those who have projects and deadlines to meet, we ask for strength, inspiration for them to meet up with whatever deadlines they have this week. Let it be, O oh God, that when we gather again on Sunday, testimonies shall abound. We pray for the activities that we have in front of us, especially for the 
MMU going for an outreach on Saturday, we ask that you will guide our footsteps and you will bring us to the souls that heavens have marked out for salvation this season. And they shall come into the fold in the name of Jesus. Even as we also gather on Saturday for the solemn assembly, crying out to you for health and wellness and healing, that Lord, heaven will be open to us. Thank you, precious Father. Be glorified and exalted, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Just before we share the grace, do we still have these persons around? I feel they have left. Reverend J. O. Ikogu from Akukwagbo. Are the Ikukwagbo contingent still around? They have all gone. We thank God for them. I think every one of my paper here are from there. The Lord grant them journey mercies back in Jesus' name. Shall we share the grace together? In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. Have a lovely week. Now waiting, I do.